What's up YouTube, Christo here, and I've got a review for you. Uh, it's been a while since I've been able to get back on camera. Things have been really hectic um, with school and just home life in general. So I thought I would come back swinging with a big boy. Today I'm going to be looking at one of my all-time favorite fall fragrances, Amouage's Epic for Men. And what's kind of special about this is I only bought this bottle about a year ago and before that I had quite limited experience with it. I had tried it a couple times even maybe, but I just didn't really know much about it. Uh, I saw a really good bottle come up for sale online, grabbed it and just didn't regret it at all. Um, turned out to be an instant favorite, like shooting into my, you know, top 10, top 20 waters kind of thing, um, which I haven't really had that kind of thing happen for a while. Kind of a, a few times since then, but up until then it was, you know, kind of a really big breakthrough for me. Uh, I, I'm just so into fall fragrances and finding something I love so much that fits the fall so well. Uh, it was just really special and it was basically my first fall back in Canada you know, my first real fall in like 12 years. So it was just kind of like this really special combination where everything just kind of came together and I was handed this, you know, close to a, you know, autumnal holy grail to me. Now, um, little thing I want to mention first, um, Amouage. Uh, I think, unfortunately, their heyday is long over. Uh, they seem to just be repeating the same formula over and over and over uh, and just kind of tweaking or changing a few notes or chords here and there and then just kind of throwing something in to mix it up now and again like a sweet, freshy kind of thing. Um, there's a few new fragrances from the house that I have not tried at all, but from what I've heard, they just fit one or the other of those categories, so I'm not overly interested in them. Uh, eventually I'm sure I'll try them and of course I will uh, approach them with an open mind but um, just kind of my opinion. Uh, I think the heyday of Amouage is you know long past by now unfortunately. Epic though, um, this is without a doubt my favorite from basically the men's line and the Opus line. I'm not particularly familiar with the women's line and I know nothing, virtually nothing about the Atars, but um, to me this is just like absolutely without a doubt uh, the best thing that has come from Amouage for men or that's unisex. Um, notes for this one, uh, it's just like everything you want in a cool weather fragrance. We've got incense, smoke, resins, animalic notes, leather, um, it's just this amazing combination of just like everything I want in a fall fragrance basically. Um, now of all those notes, the things I get the most definitely are the um, smoke and incense as well. I do get quite a lot of oud, some little spice in the background, but um, I definitely think woody, smoky, um, animalic are the big ones. Um, uh, Amouage, even though it is a kind of traditional uh, Middle Eastern house, they do actually have some ouds that are quite approachable, um, you know, for Western standards, I mean, like, you know, probably quite tame compared to a lot of Middle Eastern uh, oud fragrances, but I think this is, um, even though this is a bit more um, out there for Amouage oud, I think there are more that are um, you know, much more approachable, like Jubilation. There is, you know, a little tiny bit of oud in there, kind of like, you know, oud for beginners or, um, you know, mid-range niche oud for beginners kind of thing. I think this is a step up. Definitely more masculine, definitely more mature, definitely more um, animalic, um, barnyardy. You know, I'm even going to go a step further, even say a little bit fecal, but nothing too outrageous or extreme. Now, what does this remind me of? Uh, this reminds me of, like, a high-class, elegant punk rocker. I don't know why that is, but that's what this is. Um, I get the really nice leather jacket. So I'm not talking like a gutter punk that, you know, just wears dirty old ratty clothes. I mean like a high-end, kind of chic, kind of neo-punk kind of thing that wears like 
a leather jacket that's worth like thousands of dollars um, that smells really good, that has like nice cologne, um, smoking nice cigars kind of thing. So I get a combination of like smoke and leather. Not saying this is necessarily a tobacco based fragrance, but that's kind of what I imagine. Just like kind of a, a cool, chic, well-dressed guy, leather jacket, reeking of smoke, but like classy, sophisticated smoke. I don't really get like kind of a car interior leather that I do from like some of the pure distance fragrances. I, I find them quite different. This one I think is a bit more rugged, uh, masculine, um, maybe a bit more contemporary. Um, for this one, for me, uh, performance is just amazing. Uh, it smells really, really strong for a long time. Um, they do come as a um, an EDP standard concentration, um, and I get 10 plus hours, uh, kind of like the point where it just goes away after I have a shower, and sometimes not even after that. Like This, as well as several other amouages I have, I can still smell very clearly on myself after I have a shower. Projection. Uh, it's, it starts out quite good. It is quite strong, but I find it does kind of closen in a bit on you. Closen in? I don't know if that's a word or not, but it does kind of close in around you after a while, so it's not too outrageous, um, which is good because I do think if you're wearing this around people that aren't kind of into perfume, it might be something that people might be like, wow, what is that? Why does this guy smell like, you know, a barnyard? Why does he smell like that kind of thing? Um, which I do kind of get a little bit self-conscious about once in a while, especially like on the bus or at a bar or something like that. But um, I think this kind of sticks close around you. So it's, um, it lasts, um, but it's not, you know, kind of overwhelmingly uh, strong in terms of projection. Uh, gender on this one, definitely without a doubt. This is male macho, manly man, all balls kind of thing. Um, I always like to ride the fence, you know, unless something is really masculine or really feminine. And this one to me is just like super masculine, macho, manly man stuff, but in a really classy way. Um, I'm really into that kind of formula at the moment. Um, I'm really loving my super masculine fragrances, which is weird because like a year ago I was really into like florals and stuff. So just shows how taste changes. But um, yeah, this is totally masculine to me. Not saying there aren't going to be some women out there that appreciate this, um, you know, on themselves, I mean. But uh, definitely I think this is leaning totally to the masculine side. Occasion. Uh, man, I love wearing this like I absolutely adore and love wearing this. Um, if you have the cash to burn, if you have a collection that's big enough, if you get a bottle for cheap enough, you know, then just wear it anywhere in the fall. I think it is so good. Um, but if you are going to be kind of sparing, you don't want to burn through it too quickly, it's definitely a formal fragrance. Um, this would be amazing like suit and tie formal wear, um, like, you know, a kind of classy function or even maybe like a really sophisticated date atmosphere kind of thing. I think this would be awesome. Um, if you're going to drop like retail on this and you've only got two or three bottles, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't advise just wearing this to the bar or whatever because it is not cheap. Um, Getting into that, uh, retail on this, uh, it is quite a lot. It is $300 or more um, on a US standard. Um, you're looking at for about the 100 mil like I have here. Uh, that said, you can get these quite heavily discounted, but unfortunately in the last couple of years, um, amouages are just being snapped up left and right in the um, gray market. Uh, it's kind of interesting, about five years ago when Amouage first kind of broke into the um, YouTube scene, they were like highly desirable, they were impossible to find outside of retail. Basically, if you're outside of Middle East, uh, Western Europe, and parts of North America, you just could not get your hands on this. Um, they were like in really high demand, people paying like retail plus for them, uh, just for the rarity, and then just 
overnight, uh, the gray market was just flooded with them. And at one point, you could actually get 100 mil bottles, um, not necessarily of Epic, but you could get 100 mil bottles of Reflection, Jubilation, um, Silver, CL, um, you know, quite desirable releases from the house for as little as like 120 US dollars for 100 mil, which is just insane. Um, I was lucky. I picked up a few of them around that point. Not this one. I got this more recently, which brings me on to the whole cap kind of controversy. Now, this is a metallic cap era. There's a lot of people out there who avoid the metal caps. They want the, uh, I should say, magnetic cap because there is also an earlier metal cap. So um, a lot of people avoid the magnetic caps trying to go for the mid-range or mid-era plastic caps. Now, I have some from all three of those eras. I have this one in magnetic, I have a couple plastic, and I have a couple metallic caps. Um, I unfortunately do not have much experience with the same fragrances in the other versions. There's a lot of controversy. Some people say they smell totally different. Some people say they smell exactly the same. Um, some people say it's only projection longevity that changes. Others say the fragrances themselves smell totally different. Um, I've smelled a lot of different versions um, from a lot of the different eras, and I honestly can't really say I've picked up much of a difference. There may be minute differences to the formula. There may be minute differences to projection longevity, but to me, I find them to be really, really similar. And honestly, this smells so amazing. Like if the plastic cap era version is that much better, um, you know, I think I probably would have noticed because I have tried it before, but um, I think they're pretty close. Um, you know, reputable mid-range niche brands like this probably do a pretty good job as, you know, replicating them as closely as they can. That said, if you're really familiar, if you have both bottles and you wear them a lot and you're a real stickler and that's like one of your favorites, you're probably going to notice more differences than I am. Now, talking about uh, kind of amouage being over, um, to me, um, their last greatest releases were Honor and Memoir, and it seems like they keep rehashing Memoir just over and over and over. Interlude, to me, is just a slight variation on Memoir. Ashy, smoky. Throw in a couple notes here, change a couple notes there. Then they're doing it again with Journey and Fate and possibly Myths, the new one, because what I've basically heard over and over and over again is that Myths is ashy and smoky. Um, this one's different. This is definitely not ashy. Definitely there is some smoke, but it's not like the kind of smoke you get out of Interlude or Memoir um, or uh, Journey or whatever. Um, so although I do love memoir and I do love uh, honor, I think this just beats the pants off them. And to me, this is like the last great amouage, possibly forever. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, for me, for positives for this one, um, almost everything. Uh, I, I just love it. It has great performance, um, great longevity. Uh, it smells amazing. It's super classy. It's masculine. Um, it definitely smells like kind of strange high-end perfume, like niche should, in my opinion. Um, it's accessible, but it's not done to death. Um, you know, even Jubilation, which is probably the biggest fragrance in our kind of community, is still like, you don't just run into people on the streets wearing Jubilation. Um, there's, you know, there's very little I can say negative about this, honestly. Um, you know, I think it's, it's just a really solid release. Um, the only thing I can say that is negative is definitely the retail price point. But um, these are so accessible now uh, that you can pretty much get them anywhere in the world for at least slightly discounted. If you're lucky enough to be in... Uh, the United States or Western Europe, you can probably get them for like half retail price right now. Um, it does seem to kind of fluctuate. 
um, with availability and demand, of course, but um, I think they're a little bit higher than they were before now, but um, they're definitely still available well under uh, retail if you're um, willing to look around, but um, of course be careful. So uh, overall, um, this is an absolutely amazing fragrance. I bought this 99.9% .9 full, and I don't know if you can see, but um, I've used about 40 mil out of this. I do actually carry a little atomizer around with me um, just to refresh, like if I'm at the bar with my buddies and I don't want to carry a bottle like that around. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's just like, I don't think I've honestly ever used 40 mil of a fragrance in a year or less than a year um, since I started collecting. So just like, it just tells you how much I absolutely adore this. Um, just never gone through anything like this. Um, I don't, I tend to be quite conservative when I spray, but this one I just go overboard because I just, I love the smell so much. Um, to me, this is like the jewel in Amouage's crown, you know, kind of forgive the little pun there, but um, yeah, I love this and this is definitely an all-time favorite in my books. So, uh, time to turn it over to you, ask you, what do you think of Epic? What's your favorite from Amouage? Uh, what do you think of the direction the house is going in now? Are you optimistic? Or are you a bit more pessimistic like I am? Um, would love to hear from you and definitely we'll see you again soon with a lot of fall and autumn content. See you around soon.